Well, hello everyone. Nice to see so many faces and welcome to the Food Factory for Us final virtual conference. So I'm going to share my slides and give you the official welcome. Okay, so this is the final conference for the Food Factory for Us competition on increasing innovation in existing short food supply chains to make them stronger and more competitive. And on the right side, you see a number of logos. You see the Food Factory for Us, which is an activity part of Iseki Food Association. And this activity is being sponsored by the Fair Chain Project and we're funded by the European Commission. I want to say that ISECI is an independent European nonprofit association, and we aim to bring education and research and industry in the food chain all onto the same page. And we're a network of universities, of research institutes, of teachers, associations, and we work on many Horizon projects, and this competition has been a part of several and now is a part of Fair Chain. So let's see, can I go forward? Yeah, we go. Okay, Food Factory for us has been running through different Horizon and other European projects since 2017. And it is a competition that brings teams of master students from anywhere in the world together to present a project that is a solution to a specific problem in the food industry. And the problem is always relevant to a certain theme. The theme this time is increasing innovation and competitiveness in short food supply chains. In the past, the theme has been as varied as improving packaging to increasing awareness in aquaponics. So every year, the theme is quite different. The student projects are always evaluated by a very interesting and relevant advisory board, which includes experts in academia and also experts in industry. And the winning team will be chosen based on the projects they submitted, but also based on the presentations today. Here's the advisory board for this competition. And I believe all of us are here. I think Paola couldn't make it, but the rest of us are here. And we will be filling out our evaluation forms, uh, as well as uh, having already read the projects that were submitted. The Food Factory for Us competition follows the same basic structure every year. There's an emphasis on practicing these core competences that you see on the left. And these are done uh, through a series of online trainings. And the online trainings have varied over the years, but they almost always include a student presentation early on and then a project review so the students get personal feedback from the organizers about improving their project. The assessment is also following, following the same uh, basic pattern throughout the years where the quality of the project is evaluated both by the slides and the report that's handed in. And part of the quality is the application to industry. We want these projects to be real, something that will have impact. Uh, more recently, we included participation in the project quality because we want the five competences and the student growth in these competences to be a part of the evaluation. Then the written report is a part and the PowerPoint slides and the method of presentation. Also notice that the response to questions is a small part of the um, evaluation points, but we will encourage questions after each presentation and uh, ask the teams to, if possible, have more than one team member respond to the questions. And, and the winning team has some fabulous <laughs> prizes. Uh, in the past, we've had different sponsors. 
uh, giving different kinds of prizes. And for this competition, we have 300 euros from the Seki Food Association. And we also have a fabulous prize that you'll hear more about in a couple of minutes. And that's the travel and accommodation for three members of the winning team to Northern Sweden, Umeå, Sweden, to participate in the Fair Chain Food Hack. And Karen will tell about that a little, a little later. And then of course, all of the winning team members get special certificates, attesting to the fact that they are the winners. But everyone who has completed participation in this competition will have a certificate that shows their successful completion. Oops. So this is the competition, uh, Food Factory for Us, increasing innovation in existing short food supply chains to make them stronger and more competitive. And we have four teams who will be showing us their projects today. And Christoph, I'll turn it over to you. Yes, thank you, Catherine. So as Catherine already mentioned, we have four teams with us today. The first team is GDA Smart Team from Spain. Then we have Team Mihipo from Thailand. And two teams, SLSU Kaputek and Pinoy Kaun from the Philippines. And I want to take this opportunity while we're still fresh and motivated to take a group picture. And for that, I would ask for one, Catherine, to stop sharing your screen. And for the others, for all team members and also for the advisor board. And in fact, for everybody who wants to be part of the group picture to turn on your camera. Oh, I see Team Hippo all together. And I will hide non video participants so that we are all together. Just a second, remove that one. Now we are here, all keep smiling and <laughs> perfect. Thank you very much. I take a second one here. <laughs> I will. It takes a second to realize, perfect. Okay, so we have our four teams and those four teams have been working over the last month, month and a half on their projects, not, not only working, but also improving their projects on finding a solution to increasing um, innovation in short food supply chains. And they will be telling us about their projects in a bit, but as this is a competition, I want to remind you about the rules. We have to, to find a winner, so there are rules for that. And now there it is. So each team has 10 minutes to give the presentation. And the first minute has to be their elevator pitch. And contrary to the training sessions that we had, this time I will interrupt you. I will stop you should you go over the 10 minutes. So should you hear me ask you to come to a conclusion, you know that you went over the 10 minutes. And after each presentation, as Catherine already mentioned this, we have two to three minutes for the, the team to answer questions. And here I want to reiter reiterate and um, please do ask questions. They're interesting projects. And if you want to ask a question, you can either do that through the chat. So you can write your, uh, your question in the chat and we will then read the question out for you. Or if you want to pose your question directly to the teams, then please raise your hand and we will then ask you to unmute yourself and you can ask your question. And this leads um, also leads me to the, in my eyes, most important rule for today to please keep yourself muted throughout the whole conference, unless you're speaking, of course, um, so that we have a, a fair competition without any interruptions. All right, so this is today's program. You already heard the, the introduction, the short introduction to the competition. And before we now move to the first team to present their project, um, I turn it over to Karin Östergren. She's a senior scientist at the RISE Institute in Sweden, as well as a adjunct professor, I think, uh, at the uh, Department for Food Technologies and Engineering and Nutrition at the Lund Universities. 
I remembered it before, but now I had to, to read it. And as Catherine mentioned, she will tell us more about the food hack to where the, the winning team will be going in September. So I will stop sharing my screen. And Karen, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Christoph. And now I'm sharing my screen. We can see it perfectly. Thank you. Uh, the, with this, I would like to uh, say very, very much welcome to the winning team for this competition to the Food Hack in Umeå in Sweden. It will take place the 6th to 8th of September. And it's a fantastic city in the northern student city in the northern part of Sweden. And to tease you a little bit what will happen, uh, you, this food hack will be a part of the Nordic Wildberry Week uh, in Sweden. It consists of the food ha hack, the Nordic Wildberry Conference, and a berry festival. And here you see a lot of uh, organizations that are involved besides Fair Chain and uh, there are different projects. Uh, arranging this whole week together and the, the event will be a joint event with students from Union, Umeå University, the gastronomic program that you will meet and work together with. The first day you will meet at lunch, you will get the theme and challenge and a set of inspiration pictures and the evening uh, will take place at a local, you will Eat local food at Kulturbageriet, a joint event with the Wildberry Conference, where you will meet a lot of innovative uh, researchers and uh, companies. And day two, you will work on your challenge. And day three, you will have a chance to make your pitches for the conference. And the, also the prize ceremony will take place at the conference. Uh, so very short. Who are we? Uh, RICE. RICE stands for Research Institute of Sweden. We are, are a non-profit industrial research institute. And our task is to be internationally competitive and facilitate sustainable growth in Sweden by strengthening competitiveness and renewal in the business community. And we're about 3,000 employees scattered all over Sweden. And uh, we work with a diverse uh, of themes, but uh, food and agriculture, uh, we are about 100 employees that we sit in Gothenburg, Uppsala, Lund, Skara and Umeå. And actually, my myself, I sit in Lund, but I have some of the key colleagues in fat chain in Umeå that will take care of you. And I will, of course, be there as well. So by that, I would like to say good luck and may the best team win today. Thank you. Thank you, Karin, for the food cup presentation. It was really interesting. And I would also like to wish good luck to all the teams. So now I will um, share my screen to introduce the first team. Um, the first team is uh, Pinoy Kaon from the Southern Late State University from Philippines and they will present us the project Adopt a, a Plot and Help a Lot, a mobile app connecting consumers to local farmers in the Philippines. So I would like to give the floor to Reinberto, Vivian and Vanessa to share their screens and Perfect. Good, good day, everyone. Mabuhay from the Philippines. Today, we're going to present our interesting project proposal entitled Adopt a Plot and Help a Lot or Apple App, a mobile app connecting consumers to local farmers in the Philippines. 
Apple app also means adding a pal or a farmer friends to our network. As what we observe here in Philippines that the farmer are low wages when it comes selling their product. In order to help the farmers increase their wages and to make it easier for them in growing plant, we want to make a mobile app, which is Apple app, that could help the farmers by having the consumers adopt plot from them. And through the guidance of the farmers, together with the consumers, they can actually teach their younger ones in knowing how to take care and grow an organic plant. So, this is our team. Me, Vanessa, Roberto, and yours, Vicky, again. And we are 59,000 in Southern Lake State University, Philippines. The actual app can be applied to different types of products. A team will buy a photo from the organic Vanessa, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we don't hear you. Roberto, you have to unmute yourself to hear her. We don't hear her. We still cannot hear you. Now we hear you. You can. Um, we're sorry for that. We're gonna swap for Inverta. <laughs> The Advo app could be applied into the different sector of agriculture. Our team would like to focus on the organic agriculture in the Philippines. As shown, the figure one shows that the organic farming is rising in popular popularity, where most of the people have chosen to sometimes buy organic food products that has a result of 32% on the survey. In fact, the Philippine budget shows that 43 million billion peso allotted for 2023 agriculture has a bigger budget on rice with 30.30 .30 billion peso to be followed by corn 5.02 billion peso, livestock 4.50 billion peso, and the organic agriculture has 900 million peso. This figure tell us that there is a future direction in the organic agriculture sector. Next range, next. Here is the current supply chain for organic produce in our country. First, the organic produce starts from organic farm, then they are distributed by the independent distributors to different specialty market shops or markets that specialize selling organic produce. And also, some shops are using online apps and selling their products to the consumers who are living in urban areas and belonging to higher social strata. However, this makes organic products more expensive. Consumers have to look for specialty source nearby and considering the distance between the producer and consumer, this resulted to young Filipinos, particularly in those urban areas, to be detached from agriculture. Yeah. So our plan is to shorten the gap between the consumer and farmers using a mobile app called Adpa app. 
in which the farmer can direct himself to the consumer and the consumer will be able to locate the farmer and learn organic farming by adapting a plan. The following are the key features of AdPal app. User-friendly free app with in English interface. Support Android devices because most of the Filipino are using Android phones. A list of certified partner organic farmers finds the nearest organic farms to buy produce or lease plots and provide password secured access to data and information. Here is the data flow diagram of the AdPal app for the farmer users. As what's shown in the figure, once the farmer opens the app, they will be redirected to the farmer login, which they will log in. They will now register their farm, which includes the name of the farm, contact details, the proprietor, location, commodities planted and harvested, the available plot they have, the ranges of the lease fee and educational and recreational activities that every farm could offer. Once they input these things, the information will now go directly to the farmer's database. Okay. Moving on, this figure shows the data flow diagram for the buyer users. Once the buyer opens the app, they are now then required to sign up and are going to log in next. Then the buyer must provide their information and this will be stored in the buyer's database. Hence, if the buyer wants to go select an organic product, they will be directed to shopping, where the farmer's database will give information in any organic product that are, are available in any farms. Next is searching a farm. If the buyer wants to lease a plot, then they can search the farm. The farmer's database will once again provide the information about the location of any farm, the commodities plant they have, the available plot they have, how much is the lease fee, and educational and recreational activities every farm could offer. Thus, the app has an alert system. This alert system allows the buyer to know what is happening to the plot because the targeted buyers are most likely for, from the urban areas and are belonging to the higher strata, so they cannot fully take care of the plant. The alert system will make them know about the happenings of the plot they have chosen to left for the farmers to, to continue to take care of. Here is the interface structure. Here is the next is the interface structure of the app to the buyer users. The first thing they may notice once they open the app will be the login and sign up page. Once they are finished, they will be directed to the home page. The home page provides your profile page where you can edit any of your information. Then the go shopping page where you can directly shop for the organic products that you want. And go to the checkbox where you can check if the organic products that you want to get is available. The third icon is the find farm page. Where you, can see, where you can see the location of any farm that are within your radius and those are not. The commodity that each farm can offer, the availability of plots that any farm has, their lease and lease prices and educational and recreational activities. The educational and recreational activities that the farm could offer are most likely plot pickle and jam making, plot growing, wine and fruit juices making, desserts made from an organic product and many others. Lastly, the tutorial page icon. This will direct you to a video of how to use the app properly. In this slide, you can see the sample of the app's interface. The figure five shows you the sign up or login page where you provide your information, just like your name, email, location, and if you are a buyer or a farmer. The other figure shows you the homepage where if you are a farmer, then you can directly register your farm. And if you are a buyer, then you can see these icons, the four icons I have mentioned earlier. Okay. Okay. These are the four stages of the project implementation. First is the surveying, which we have partly done. Next is the app development, where the team will find programmers, developers, and farmers and contact the Department of Agriculture and Municipal Agriculture Office. Then here comes assessment of acceptance, where the app will be tested. There will be local farmers and consumers gathered so the team can explain how the mobile app works. The lease price at every plot are much likely higher than the farmer's wages. It will also be explained in the assessment about the contracts and how the adoption of the plot will take long. Both the farmers and consumers who have should have to have the willingness to participate and must own an Android smartphone. Lastly, is the turnover of the technology. Once the dry run and the implementation of the project is successful, it is expected that the app will be turned over to the local government unit in collaboration with the Municipal Agriculture Office. Next. This will be the future of the project. 
It allows to have a networking happening through both consumers and farmers. The consumers can now then support the farmers through adopting a plot. The lease collected will go directly to the farmers so they can increase their wages. The app makes the consumer convenient because they can directly see if the plot or activities are available onto the farms. Also, the learning activities could help the younger Filipinos to love agriculture, especially organic farming. The activities could teach them about the plot growing, jam makings, and many, many other activities that farm can offer, which they will surely enjoy. The app will not only shorten the gap between the farmers and the consumers, but it can also sustain a balance between our economic and agriculture growth. The farmers now will not be in their past long wages, and also they can now give back their knowledge onto the consumers. And through the AdPal app, we can make consumers and farmers connect with each other in a convenient and much easier way. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Um, is there any question from the audience? Uh, Catherine? Yes, thank you. Thanks, Vanessa and the rest of the team for a very nice presentation. Um, I, I was uh, really clear uh, on the shopping uh, aspect of the app, but I was not so clear on the adopt a plot. Can, can you tell uh, a little more what the user, not the farmer, the, the city, the urban user uh, is doing in this adopt a plot? Hi, can you hear me now? The consumers can, if they want to adopt a plot, they can go to directly to the farms where the farmers are, and they will lease a plot, which will take long for if, if a month or not, they can grow it. And if they cannot continue to grow it, they can actually tell the farmers to grow it and the lease price can go directly to the, still go directly to the farmers. Okay, so if I'm the urban person and I adopt a plot, I can go there and do the growing or I can have the farmer grow on this plot and I get the, the produce. Is that can you actually go to the farm and get and adopt the plot and you can actually get the produce if you want or you can give it to the farmers so they can actually sell it oh, oh, with your oh. consent oh i see okay so there are some interesting options okay good thanks very much okay we have another question christina uh, thank you uh, hello uh, congratulations for your work i I like to have your uh, thoughts about uh, the challenges uh, of implementing such uh, communication. I mean, uh, what about the farmers? Are, are, are they, do they have literacy to enter this uh, kind of app? And um, so I'm, I'm asking uh, how easy you see the implementation of your idea uh, considering uh, the farmers that probably are older and other people that don't have uh, probably the skills to use this kind of uh, communication tools. Thank you for the question. Once the app is implemented, we can actually give an assessment for the farmers so they can actually know how to work the app and they will learn from it so that they will not be, so that it will not be difficult for them to, so that will not be difficult for them to know the app. Thank you. 
Thank you, Christina and Tim Pinoy Kaon. If there is and if there is not any other question, we can continue to the next team. Okay. I don't see anything in the chat or hands raised. So the next team is SLSU Kabutech, again from the Southern Leyte State University from Philippines. And they will present the Pinoy Trike, a mobile fruit market for the highland farmers in the Philippines. So I would like to give now the floor to Maria, Carmi and Zia to present their project. Good day, everyone, and good evening from the Philippines. So our project is entitled The Pinoy Trike, a mobile fruit market for the highland farmers in the Philippines. Many highland villages in the Philippines, such as Barangay Libas, Santa Maria, and Laugawan, Sugod, Southern Leyte, are the primary sources of various fruits. And the fruits from these villages are brought down to the market by improvised motorcycles, locally called as Habal Habal, which cost $8 per trip and it is costly for farmer standards. So our project, the Pinoy Trike, a mobile fruit market, aims to solve the scarcity and costly fare of transporting commodities from highland villages to low or high-end markets in the Philippines. With this, the farmers will be able to compete more successfully in the market and the project will be able to build a stronger and more competitive short food supply chain with lesser cost from the farmer's pocket. Good evening, everyone. Greetings from all the way here in the Philippines. I would like to introduce the team. I am Zia, together with my teammates, Maria and Carmen. We are second year for technology students from Southern Leyte State University main campus. To start our presentation, I would like you to meet Mang Rudy. He is a highland farmer from the Philippines and one of the farmers that we encountered and talked to. He shared this phrase, Lisod ang kinabuhi sa mag-uuma, permi ka alkansi. Di may makabawi kay mahal ang titi sa habal-habal o gunaalang untay magamit na motor. According to Mang Rudy, the life as a farmer, a grower, and a harvester especially as a highland farmer is difficult as they are always at a disadvantage every time they will distribute their product to the markets and traders. This is due to the higher cost of transportation and low buying price by the sellers. This is the current situation of highland farmers in the Philippines. Highland farmers would be the one to the ones to supply the fruits. And in order for them to deliver it to the traders, they will need to rent a habal habal that usually costs $8, which is almost 400 pesos. After that, it will be sent to the barangay distributor. The barangay distributor serves as an intermediary wherein the transported fruits from the farmers and producers will be sorted out. When the fruits are sorted out, the distributor will now deliver them to the marketers and consumers or they can also be delivered to traders and then to neighboring towns and larger cities. It is a problem for farmers as their income cannot reach their profit expectation due to the high cost of transporting. Also, highland farmers had lower bargaining influence because they lack market information. And because of that, marketers preferred lowland farmers as they were easy to negotiate with and easy to access. Consumers, on the other hand, will be unable to obtain the good value of fruits as the worth of their money as it will be good value of fruits that are worth money as it will be cleaved while being transported by the habal habal. So, 
And Maria, please unmute yourself. Sorry. So the team would like to introduce the Pinoy Cried. It is a simple but innovative and effective way of marketing products from highland farmers to the lowland or high-end market. Its features include the speaker that will announce its arrival to the villages or, or markets, the partitions for different foods, which keeps it from damage. It can also carry 800 kilograms of commodities and the estimated cost of the project is 200,000 pesos. There will also be two people managing the tribe. This is how the Pinoy tribe shortened the supply chain. From the highland farmers, the improvised Pinoy tribe will directly collect, transport, and distribute the produce to consumers or to the market, which will be sold to the consumers. So the Pinoy tribe will not just shorten the supply chain. Its impacts also include better quality for the consumers, as the tribe will prevent the foods from cleaving together. It's also convenient for the consumers as they can purchase the commodities directly rather than traveling to markets. The tribe will also enable highland farmers to trade and sell their, their produce directly to consumers as it minimizes the intermediaries involved in transporting and dis distributing the commodities. The produce is also at fair price, so it will benefit both the farmers and consumers. It also increases the farmers' bargaining and marketing influence over the price of their commodities, which improves the income of the highland farmers and in turn develop a long-term strategy for the development of highland agriculture. The pilot Pinoy tribe will be implemented among 10 selected highland farmers. They are the small farmers who are having less than one or two hectares of land and a group or association will be created within those highland farmers. Through a focus group discussion, their basic information will be gathered to come up with a farmer's profile, including the information of the type of commodities they produce seasonally, its volume, and their weekly income. The highland farmers will then establish partnership with the local government unit, and along with that, a discussion between the farmers and the Department of Agriculture, Municipal Agriculture Office will be made. This is to include proper maintenance of the Pinoy Tribe unit. There might be rental fees or it could be handed over by the local government unit and the maintenance will be handled by the Highland farmers. Then the project proceeds with the construction and development of Pinoy Tribe, in which a dry run will occur in less or more than five months so the farmers will be able to adopt the utilization of the Pinoy right. The efficiency of the Pinoy right will then be evaluated if it indeed shortens the chain and if it indeed um, increases the, the profit of highland farmers. If successful, the project will be turned over to the local government unit and is expected to be introduced and adopted to the neighboring municipalities. On top of that, the improvised mobile fruit market will build a stronger connection to producers and consumers, and it will create not just an association of highland farmers, but the project will also produce farmers, and at the same time, the entrepreneurs, who will be more competitive in the market. Thank you. Thank you very much, Team SLSU Kabutek. So, um, if anyone has any question, you can type it in the chat or just raise your hand. Christina? Um, congratulations for your work. I have one question. This kind of... Um, way of transportation uh, is it uh, are you cons is there a possibility to be used uh, uh, with an electric engine or is it what kind of um, fuel is uh, using i'm sorry but 
Can you repeat the, the question, Mark? I, I, mean, I want to know if uh, the, this kind of uh, vehicle is using gasoline or diesel, or if uh, you are considering a more ecological uh, solution, uh, if it's feasible, yes, if it's uh, feasible to implement in your region an electrical uh, electrical car. Uh, thank you. Um, we try to be using gasoline. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So is there any other question? Um, Catherine. Oh. No, no, Catherine. No, go ahead, Christophe. I had for the other team. No, I just wanted to know if it if was if it was possible to by using this car to find other places to to sell the products. You see what I mean? Um, because you are going in a uh, usual um, in current uh, market marketplaces. So is it possible to to find a new uh, new places to to sell the products? You see what I mean? And to multiply, I would say to find other um, more uh, sites, more uh, places to sell the products due to the vehicles. Uh, yes, since it's a mobile market, so there will be a higher chance of going to different villages to deliver directly, or um, they can deliver it directly to consumers. Yes, thank you. For me, it was not very clear. So thank you very much for the precision. Thank you. Catherine, do you want to ask your question or? Yeah, why not? Okay. I'm, I'm wondering about the sharing or, or not of this uh, Hinoi trike. Are, are several uh, who who owns it, and how is how do the fa different farmers use it? Um, we had mentioned that it's either the local government unit will ask the Highland farmers for rental fees or they could handle it over to the Highland farmers and they will be the one to manage the maintenance of the tribe. Great, thank you. Great, so I don't see any other questions in the chat or raised hands. Uh, ah, yeah. Hi, Hedwig, yes. Yes, uh, congratulations with your clear presentation. I had also a question along the line of Catherine. Uh, I would like to better understand when you, uh, the, or did I understand correctly that your proposal is that uh, farmers are responsible for the maintenance or is it the government? Because today it also costs uh, to rent the transportation. So I guess uh, the cost of maintaining, how, how will this then be handled? So since the local government unit is a nonprofit organization, they can just um, let the farmers handle the maintenance or above the rental, it's it won't be that they want the farmers won't uh, spend more money since the rental will only include the gasoline and there's not much any change with the trike. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know about the capabilities to maintain vehicles and uh, how it is run in the Philippines. So, uh, yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I think it's time to continue with the next team.
So the next team is Mihi Po from Chulalongkorn University from Thailand. And they will present the project One Future, online vertical farming synergies for the future. So I would like to give the floor now to Michael, Hina and Poke to present their project. Can you see the video? Yes. Great. Right. Oh, it's okay. Greetings. Yeah. Um, I'm Michael. I'm Hina. I'm Ho. And we are team Mi Epo from Thailand. And today uh, we will present the topic of, which have changed a new topic like recently, opportunity empowering sustainable shop food supply chain to online platform and alternative growing space. So here is our table of content. We will start with our pitch, then background, introduction, objective, methodology, urban agriculture, and our decided website, including at the end with expected result and our conclusion. So uh, are you tired of the lengthy journey you would take from farm to table? Imagine a future where fresh nutrition products are just one stone throw away from your doorstep. Introducing our short food supply chain system coupled with urban agriculture, flavor net. By utilizing vertical space, we can maximize efficiency and produce a significant amount of food in a fraction of the space required by traditional farming method. Then flavor net is a digital platform that contains the necessary knowledge required for sustainable farming practice and business management. It connects all small scale farmer with a local consumer and retailer we take advantage of this urban farm to create a seamless connection between producer and consumer by eliminating the middleman and streamlining the process. We ensure that the fresh fruit, vegetable, and herbs reach your plate within hour of being harvested while reducing unnecessary carbon footprint. So to say where we came from, we have to say that agriculture is a very competitive and diverse subsector in Thailand, since agriculture has been a major part of our culture development for a generation, with approximately 127 million acres of land, around 52% is suitable for agriculture. Thailand gross domestic product is only 6% accounted for agriculture, yet the industry employs almost one third of the workforce. And according to the statistic share of economic section in the gross domestic product, Thailand in 2021, only 8.35% was for agriculture. And however, there are structural issues with Thai agriculture sector, particularly the lack of production planning, the lack of management, and the shortage of labor. So to cover with this, a structural issue indicate that there is a potential investment opportunity for agricultural business, including large agricultural businesses and egg check. For example, of this issue, including the urbanization that has been increasing unevenly and the food transportation to an urban communities. With the idea of solving this major problem in local agriculture, we were inspired by a successful business model of Grandpa Urban Farm, which is an urban organic farm that resides within the uh, urban area in Bangkok and mainly aim to be a learning center and a role model for sustainable living in the city that has been teaching Bangkok citizens for over a decade. And fun fact, Grandpa also lived up to 101 years. Now, to propose to explore this technology-based solution, we also align with the several uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, which is SDG. Uh, the first one is SDG 2, Zero Hunger, by increasing access to fresh and nutritious food, particularly in urban areas with food insecurity concern. SDG 8, Decent Work and Economic Growth, by supporting local economic and creating job opportunities in the agricultural sector. And then it's SDG 12, uh, responsible consumption and production by reducing food waste and utilizing resources more efficiently. SDG 13, climate action, promoting low carbon agriculture practice and reducing greenhouse gas emission. The next part will be explained by Hina. Okay, so for our project, we have set some objectives. The main objective is to 
to provide and implement a sustainable and scalable short food supply chains that will benefit both consumers and farmers. So the first most objective is to develop a digital platform that connects small scale farmers with local consumers and retailers, streamlining and optimizing production and distribution process, and following by promoting the adoption of urban agriculture and alternative growing spaces, including rooftop gardens, indoor farms, community gardens, and vertical farming. And the next main objective is provide financial incentives, technical assistance, and education to small-scale farmers to support adoption and farmer, uh, of urban agriculture and alternative growing spaces. What? No, oh, I can move. Okay, and finally, train farmers on sustainable farming practices and business management. So for methodology, this project will be implemented in three phases, including planning, implementation, and evaluation. So the first part is conducting a need assessment to identify the specific needs and challenges of small-scale farmers, perform a feasibility study to determine appropriate urban agriculture places, including the uh, vertical farming, and of course, lastly, developing a digital platform to connect farmers with the consumers and retailers. The next phase is implementation. So for this phase, we will implement the digital platform and promote the adoption of urban agriculture and alternative growing spaces, of course, providing financial incentives, technical assistance, and education to support farmers. And lastly, evaluation of our projects. So evaluation of the effectiveness of project we will be done by using qualitative and quantitative methods. So urban agriculture, according to Siam Commercial Bank data 2023, a normal Thai citizen is average monthly income is 24,500 baht and average monthly savings is 7,050 baht with the guidance and inspiration from Grandpa Urban Farm. If you want to start up an uh, urban agriculture, the approximate cost of starting a small scale urban agriculture in Thailand is 3,100 3, baht, which is 42.2% of average monthly savings and 12.6% of average monthly income. And following by the study course, which provides both theory sessions and workshop sessions, as uh, from the uh, Grandpa Urban Farms, they are already offering one day organic vegetable gardening course that includes theory session and and workshop sessions, but in a project, we can boost it into, into an online platform for a long life learning and easily accessible from any location. So for our online uh, sessions, they will include the idea of self-sufficient of urban farm, basic knowledge of organic vegetable gardening, growing vegetable technique in the city, making compositing and biofermented. And another thing is on-site workshop that will include seeding and sprout cultivation, growing vegetable techniques, making composting and bioformatting, and special sessions such as earthworm compositing and seed collection. And finally, our third uh, uh, phase is marketing. So now we have a set of urban agriculture farmer. So they are trained already, and this is time to connect them with the retailers and uh, consumers through a digital platform that is FlavorNet. Over to you, Michael. Thank you, yeah. Fast track local food online, virtually enhancing regional networks, FlavorNet. This is our website. According to the National Journal of Food Studies, ICT, Incorporation and Communication Technology, can play a vital role in strengthening short food supply chains as it helps improve collaboration between farmers, producers, and consumers, and it can reduce costs and improve efficiency. In a study in India and Kenya, Farmers are using websites for e-commerce in Japan. They're using sensors and drones to monitor the crops and improve yield. Here, you will see Thailand. As you can see, FlavorNet has seven main points. The first is a directory that is comprehensive of producers and products with contact information and location. Second is a blog that features articles and celebrate Thai food, providing history and cultural significance, even recipes. Third is online store, which provide a variety of food products all over Thailand. Third, now let's go to the fourth, which is a cooperative locator for fresh produce, which facilitates direct purchase from former cooperatives within the city. Then the fifth is food, short food supply chain locator, provides information such as distance travel, prices, and even carbon footprint, and resources which have access to information like PDF and videos about urban farming, vertical farming, and choosing sustainable crops within the city according to the weather in Bangkok. And lastly is this uh, multi-benefits, which about health information benefits of specific fruits and vegetables, information about pesticides and harmful effects of fertilizers. Now you'll be wondering, how does FlavorNet look like? So here is our site map. As you can see, the directory and locator, 
the online stores, the e-commerce, the resources, and like statistics and contact information. And this is our sitemap. So what are the possible impacts? First is increased adoption of urban agriculture, improved production, increased access to fresh and healthy foods for local consumers, reduced carbon emission, and an overall sustainable agriculture and local economies. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, embracing power of innovation, Urban Synergy, our project has laid the foundation for a tantalizing revolution in the realm of local food consumption. We have seen how combination of technology-driven platforms combined with unconventional growing spaces like vertical farming can create powerful and sustainable short food supply chain. Urban Synergy isn't just a platform, it's a movement, a culinary symphony where technology and agriculture tangle, creating harmonious balance that will resonate throughout generations. It's a flavor resolution, a feast for the senses, a head turner that will transform the way we think about local food. So please, everyone, let's join hand in hand, ignite our taste, and march forward together into a future where every bite is a celebration of our heritage and where sustainability is a secret ingredient. Thank you, and let's savor the flavor. We are Team Mihipo. Thank you so much, Team Mihipo, for this very energetic presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any question from the audience? You can raise your hands or you can um, type your question in the chat. No question. Catherine? Yeah, yeah, excellent. Super, super presentation. Really loved the, the energy. Really, really nice. Makes me want to go and do some vertical gardening. So I, I, my question is about the people who say that. I'd like to go and, and do some vertical gardening, at the, learning at the grandpa farm. Um, how does this do... Do they pay to take the course? I mean, what is, I, I maybe missed it, but how does the training part get funded? Okay, uh, I can explain this part. Uh, fun fact, uh, Grandpa Uban Farming has an online platform themselves. They have like Facebook page and Instagram, and they also take a uh, 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 it's exchange program. So people from a lot of group, I think one of the documentary group from Europe also take uh, their um, internship there as well. So you're free to do it by yourself. Uh, and about the price, however, uh, like I mentioned, uh, they have uh, their courses already. So if we want to work with them, we have to make an agreement on that part. It would not be as expensive to compare to uh, in Europe um, currency. In Thailand, it's around like 10% of our uh, monthly income. So it's not significant, but it is still a learning experience. Thank you. Christina? Uh, thank you for the opportunity to listen to your ideas. I, I really love the, the, the part of the gardening uh, doing at home. Um, how do you think, is it, what is your view? Do you think the next generation will manage to be motivated and to to find the time to, to do it? Oh, yeah, actually, that's like, that's why we're, we're planning to integrate it also into the education system. Because like, like, for example, in like other cultures, like in Japan, they're teaching their children how to follow like traffic signs and going to different, like how to go to the train stations. Also, we're planning that aside from being online platform, it's also included the educational system. So that once ingrained into the minds of the children, they themselves will be able to apply it to their daily lives. And as they grow up, as since it's, Part of their teaching already, they'll be able to do it also. Aside from teaching the parents and the high school students, it will start from childhood also. And yeah. also, we have also believed that from the study, their uh, urbanization cannot be stopped. Eventually, human uh, humankind will proceed, proceed, if taking in more area from the forest. So instead of, you know, uh, taking a avoid destroying the forest, we should integrate forest to be part of our city. And with that, we can prevent a gas house, a uh, greenhouse effect. Thank you. 
thank you. Is there any is there any other question? I don't see anything. So maybe we can go to the final team. So the last team is the team GDA Smart Team. Um, but the, they will present us the project Smart Markets towards an e-local market based on resilience, efficiency, technology, and sustainability. So uh, I would like to give the floor now to Deborah, Antonio, and Jesus to present their projects. Hello, everyone from JDA Smart Team. We are going to start our, pro our, pro our presentation of our project called Smart Markets. Are you aware of the serious global crisis that is approaching? Do you know that by 2050 there will be no food for all the population? We need to implement sustainable alternatives like short food supply chains, making them more resilient and efficient to face systemic stresses and shocks like climate change. Society looks for healthy, safe, and local products by due to the inconvenience of local markets, around 75% prefer supermarkets. Our project, Smart Markets, wants to modernize the short food supply chains through a digital transformation, taking advantage of a technological advance to face current challenges. Our project, the main objective is to develop an application based on the collaboration network, network between local producers of regional area and public entities. And uh, there is uh, more than just an online sale because uh, it's a tool to educate the next generation. We need a society that is aware and active of this new reality in order to generate a change. Why a smart market? Because we are a young, multidisciplinary, and restless team that gives value to technology, but without losing tradition. Do you like technology? Do you want to be sustainable and save the planet? If you are identified, a smart market is your project. Regarding the background of our project, what the data show, as I have explained, uh, around 17, around 15% of Italian consumers buy from local producers. And despite the fact that uh, online local food sales in Italy are increasing, they represent about just a 2% in Reggio Calabria because there are no strong networks to buy local products. Furthermore, uh, in this city, uh, short food supply chains just ex exist at a small scale. And uh, for example, the local market Campagna Mica present some problems due to the physical presence, limiting opening hours, and the low variety of, product, of products, the inconvenience is one of the main barriers. In view of this, uh, our project sets out to, to achieve several goals. They are all united by the fact that uh, uh, by achieving them, we can achieve the sustainable development goals, which are the basis of the future. In the long term, uh, for a successful uh, Food, short food supply chain uh, is important to educate uh, the next generation. It's important to put the consumer on the center of the project. And uh, uh, this is possible is being a relationship of, tr of trust. Essentially is also to make the market innovative and more attractive for producers and consumers. Enhancing uh, uh, the, the geographical area, for example, with the typical uh, uh, productions, uh, the use of one used real estate, uh, promoting the sustainable and economic development of cities and communities. For this reason, the project is based on four cornerstones, uh, sustainability, efficiency, technology, and resilience. The sustainability in order to reduce, uh, for example, waste, uh, carbon footprint, uh, sharing transport and distribution in a, um, in a central food hub. Efficiency, making the sale system efficient, the use of technology by adapting and becoming resilient to survive shocks and stresses. 
First of all, uh, to make the project solid and concrete, uh, involvement of stakeholders uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this system, in this project is necessary. So uh, the point 17 of the Sustainable Development Goals, called the collaboration for the goals, represent the first step. Um, they, uh, the, the stakeholders are, as I just said, certainly single consumers, single and purchasing consumers, groups, uh, local producers, and the technical part formed by public authorities, uh, farmer and consumer associations, and the University of Reggio Calabria. The local authorities are involved in acquiring economic fund, promoting European projects, and renting out an used premises free of charge where will be made a, a food hub. This food hub is as a, a management logistics hub for the, uh, for the entire food supply chain. Moreover, all actors are involved in uh, the territorial promotion, especially the university. We'll also proceed to provide the competencies in uh, different fields, for example, in agronomy, um, food technology, economics, uh, uh, in order to, uh, to transmit the skills in which farmers are often inadequate and cannot invest. The project uh, must be, of course, economically sustainable, uh, and this is thanks to the creation of a food hub free of charge, remember from Town Hall to recovery and reduced premises, uh, from the obtaining of uh, uh, European funds, and uh, more or less this will be the 80% uh, of the total, and uh, of the cost in four years. And other findings, other fundings are supposed to be by a premium version of the app and the incorporation of an advert of advertisement. After four years, the system will be independent. Regarding the overview of the project, it, is, it includes the opportunity to pick up orders in Food Hub seven days per week. The application also continue, contains tools where consumers can give feedback to farmers, building a trusted relationship. Discount for group purchase and free del delivery. An informative section to educate next generation by events, training, dissemination, activities, and incorporating nutritional and environment information. Furthermore, a virtual database to cover necessities of the society and improve the chain is developing, collecting sales data and consumer requests. Apart from this advantage, an online forum has been created for consumers to actively participate. Smart markets offer wide varieties of seasonal products, and in the e-card, consumers can select the type of packaging for their orders, making sustainable choices. Respect to results, based on predictive data, sales will grow from around 2% in 2024 to around 6% by 2027, with a direct impact into the generation of new employees, new consumers, and contributing to zero waste and the reduction of water and CO2 footprint. Considering the above actions and results, some of the benefits and impacts are increasing farmer economic power, self-entrepreneurship of young people, improved diets for health benefits, reducing water footprint, CO2 emission reduction, potential generation of economic around the short food supply chain, increased knowledge and active participation of society, improved knowledge on sustainability and nutrition, increasing the producer revenue, and creating safety nest, nets in the face of shocks and the stress to be short food supply chains more resilient and having positive economic, social and environment impacts. These benefits will create future perspectives based on the consolidation of the short food supply chains and to continue territorial economic growth. This are their partners involved in our project. If they trust us, why don't you? Thank you so much for your attention. If you have any question, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you very much. Is there any question? I, I have a question. Yes. Um, so, so 
you, you are starting the project by uh, finding uh, collaboration uh, of companies, uh, for, for instance, for digital uh, part, but also for finding uh, funding. But uh, have you the insurance that you will uh, be successful, that we, you will find really a uh, good collaboration with companies and, uh, and uh, good funding? To, to continue your project. Yes, thank you for your interesting question. Uh, yes, we mm, believe uh, uh, that uh, collaboration is the base of the uh, good, uh, good plan of the project. Uh, and so uh, we think also that the, the involvement of the, the different partners uh, uh, at different level of society is necessary for the uh, for the good end of the um, of the project uh, because uh, um, this is one uh, of the uh, most important problem of the smart food short food supply chain uh, especially in uh, this sector thank you Karin I have a, thank you for a very nice presentation and exciting idea. Uh, my question concerns a little bit sustainability and short supply chains, because you say you will save both the carbon dioxide and uh, well, uh, the com carbon footprint, but how, how, in what way, <laughs> this very specifically, uh, compared to uh, compared to what and in which way? Yes, thank you for your question. Uh, so, um, could be uh, many aspects uh, to reduce uh, uh, food, um, water, and uh, uh, carbon footprint. For example, the logistics hub, uh, the, lo the food hub, um, uh, will be uh, one point. Uh, uh, for the for all the uh, the producers like uh, reference for the producers and for buyers uh, reducing for example the transportation because uh, uh, as mm, so in uh, in uh, literature uh, short food one of the problem of short food supply chain uh, compared to uh, long short food supply chain is that one uh, that uh, for each for each producers uh, each producer must uh, um, uh, ship their uh, they their order uh, for uh, uh, to to achieve every uh, consumers and this is small ex this is very expensive in terms of carbon uh, footprint uh, and and this is for the food for the carbon print for the water um, footprint uh, is important to uh, valorize the typical productions because with typical productions, uh, uh, the uh, local products um, uh, need uh, less quantity of water compared to, uh, to products that are uh, uh, cultivated in uh, areas that are not uh, um, typical for the product. For the product. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, in summary, you think that uh, you will say because you will be able to use other places to uh, grow the food, it will open up for that. Because I didn't, yeah. and I was not sure about the water explanation, but. Uh, Yes, valorizing uh, the typical productions. Uh, uh, this is uh, so in, uh, mm, uh, also in literature that uh, valorizing uh, typical production of uh, uh, the geographical area where the market mm -hmm. uh, will take place. Uh, there is a, um, uh, a reduction of uh, uh, water consumption. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other question? I don't see anything. 
Okay. If there are no further questions, then we're already at the end of today's conference, at least the part for the for the presentations. And this is a big thank you to all the teams to to tell us about the projects, to share their projects. And also to a big thank you to the audience for the interactions, for the, the questions. It shows that the, the projects really are interesting projects. And uh, we will take now about a 10 minutes break, 10 to 15 minutes break. Let's see if we can do it in 10 minutes so that we don't um, extend it uh, longer than necessary. Uh, this is also a, a reminder, a quick reminder to the advisory board to please submit your evaluations. And yes, with that, we take a 10 minutes break, 10 to 15 minutes break while the points are ev evaluated. And once we are back, we will announce the winning team. So see you in 10 minutes. That's when you're muted. You're muted, Catherine. We can't hear you. Um, maybe it's a problem because she opened Skype. Yeah. I feel How about that? Yes. Now it's better. Okay, good. So we are back with the calculations of the evaluations done. And we'll get everyone here. Okay. And let's get my screen going. Okay, so welcome back to the final minutes, the most exciting minutes of the Food Factory for Us International Student Competition Game. And we have to start by saying thanks to all the teams. I mean, the advisory board and the attendees at this final conference don't really know how hard these teams worked for the past two and a half months. They produced really high quality work. They did fabulous presentations. And all of this is volunteer work. So they worked independently. They worked as volunteers to produce what we enjoyed this afternoon. They also came to our online sessions and they were active. They asked questions. They interacted with their team members and also with other team members, people they just met. So they gave feedback to help the other teams really selflessly. And they all proposed solutions that are really innovative, really interesting, really possible to do to improve food industry, the food chain and the local community. So they're all contributing to improving sustainability, and we want to encourage all of you to continue and pursue the project you presented today. And with that, we can announce the winning team. And I will say that it was close. The points were close. The teams were not separated by much, but there was indeed one winner, and the winning team is Mihipo. Congratulations to the Mihipo team from Chula Longorn, sorry, University, with the project One Future, online synergies of vertical farming for a sustainable future. Congratulations, Michael, Hina, Poke. You did a fabulous job. It was fabulous working with you for these two and a half months and you did a fabulous job today. And I cannot wait to meet you in Sweden, <laughs> where you will be part of the Berry Festival and uh, in helping to, um, to advance the, the short food supply chain of wild berries in Northern Sweden. So congratulations to you and to the three other teams who were right on your heels, very close behind you. So with Thank that, huh. yep. Let's get a picture of the Mihipo team <laughs> and their and their winning certificate. Okay, thanks. Right. For stuff. We'll put this all over social media. 
So get ready. <laughs> so thanks to everyone for coming these uh, this hour and a half, joining us on this afternoon evening for the final conference. And remember to sign up for the Iseki newsletter and sign up for the Fair Chain newsletter. And you'll learn about future Food Factory for Us competitions and teams are welcome to participate in future competitions. And you'll learn about other Fair Chain events. And for the student teams, please uh, complete the learner evaluation end, which is on our website where all of the student activities are. And as soon as we get those from all members of the team, then you'll get your participation certificates. So with that, thanks to all of you and Team Mihipo will be in contact with you regarding your winnings and wishing you all a very nice afternoon and a nice uh, end of the week. <laughs>